I'm trying to film a video. Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilter's Workshop and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how I painted my dining room chairs. We were really generously given a table that's black and it has um, X's on the ends. I'll post uh, pictures at the end of the video and since the quarantine I've been working from home and so I've set up my home office at my dining room table and I I had some chairs that I picked up uh, used well they actually weren't used <laughs> they were brand new in their boxes and hadn't ever been un unopened um, hadn't ever been opened or even assembled but I bought them on Virage sale which is kind of like Kijiji if you're not familiar with it and I paid only $90 for a set of six chairs and they were this gorgeous cherry wood color with a cream fabric seat. So uh, the cherry wood was okay just to have something to go with the black table uh, until I could either find something you know, better or paint them, but I couldn't really decide what I wanted to do. And because they were brand new, I did feel a little weird about refinishing them somehow. And a lot of people told me that they were already beautiful as they were and just leave them. Um, but because I've been spending about seven hours a day at that table, I finally decided that I really did want to change the color. And I have a couple of other ideas in that space as well that I want to update. So I looked online for what to do and I decided to try out a milk paint from the brand General Finishes. So I'm Canadian for those of you who don't know. So General Finishes is not a brand that is easily accessible. I know tons of people like to use their gel stain in the Java color. Um, and people talk about being able to pick that up at Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot and on Amazon. And we, we can get it on Amazon in Canada as well, but the shipping for me to get it is almost more than the actual cost of the product. So thankfully I discovered that Lee Valley Tools in Toronto um, sells the general finishes brands. Um, but I got this in the color driftwood and on the general finishes website, there are way more shades than what was available to me at Lee Valley tools. So, um, the options were limited, but at least, um, driftwood was probably in my top three, but the color that I actually really wanted to do was perfect gray. I think that's what it was called. So they were, um, quite shiny before, um, and I lightly sanded everything. So I didn't use like an electric sand or anything like that. I just sanded by hand and just lightly scuffed up everything. I removed the chair pad portion so that I didn't have to worry about protecting the fabric and then I could just kind of have at it with the paint. Um, I did two coats of the gray and in case anyone is wondering because I really paid attention this time normally when I do home projects I don't really pay too much attention to the length of time that I spend doing something but each coat of the gray paint took me about 45 minutes to paint each chair. So I had six chairs at 45 minutes each times two. The top coat that I ended up using is the General Finishes brand that goes with the paint. So it's the water-based top coat and I got it in satin. I can't imagine getting this in semi-gloss or full gloss because I'll show you my chairs after. But they are very shiny so I can't believe how glossy they are just with the satin. So they recommend doing at least two coats of the top coat if it's something if it's something that you're not going to be touching a lot so maybe if it's a shelf or um, just something that you're not handling um, but because it's a chair that you recommended that anything you used in children's rooms or anything that was going to have high traffic have three coats so I did ended up I did end up doing three coats of the top coat. And the top coat took me about 30 minutes to apply each coat, probably because you can be a little bit less careful about it um, since it's just going to dry clear anyway. So then if you do the math on that, I took about 30 minutes with six chairs, three times each. So um, it took me about a week to finish everything because I was just working on things in the evening. And then of course you need to allow for drying time and things like that. So with the milk paint, 
I probably let each coat dry overnight like I would spend the 45 minutes doing each chair and then on the next day in the evening when I had time to work on them again I would do the second coat and I worked with about three chairs at a time because that's just how much space I had on my drop cloth that I was using but for the top coats you have to let it dry between two to four hours and to be safe I let it have four hours in between each each time that I did another coat so sometimes again that that meant that I would have to go to bed and then the next day get back to it again. And then when I finished applying my third coat, I actually left it for about 48 hours before I put my chair pads back on. Um, but I do really recommend this little combination. Um, you don't have to worry too much about sanding really well. It just goes on perfectly like a dream. And I think as well, if you were going with a cut like one of their blues or gray tones like I said they have tons of colors in the milk paint but if you were going with something like that and you were putting it on wood that was unfinished or if you were putting it on something that was white already or a light oak color I feel like you might be able to get away with just one coat but because my chairs were like a darker cherry color and I was painting them gray um, the cherry was still coming through from the first coat so that's why I ended up needing to have two um, but I am really, really happy with uh, the results of everything and I'll, I'll show you what that um, turned out like. My goal really with the dining room is to make it a little bit more formal than the way my kitchen is. So my style is definitely farmhouse style or more of like a shabby chic look, which <laughs> I love to say that I've loved shabby chic decor way before farmhouse style kind of blew up in popularity. I don't know, I think it's still quite popular, but more so like in the South. Like I think um, a lot of styles right now are kind of going more towards like a bohemian look, but the shabby chic is just literally what I've always loved. So whether that's in or out right now in terms of um, popularity or retail stores, um, that's one thing, but my house is always gonna look like this. So, <laughs> um, But my kitchen um, is very farmhouse because I have my farmhouse style table and my blue cupboards and my um, china cabinet is white so everything is kind of white and blue and brown So I wanted my dining room to be just a little bit more formal looking. So that's why I wanted the high gloss on the chairs. I've got the black table. Um, the chairs have fabric cover um, pads, which the kitchen chairs don't. So that kind of helps make it look a little bit more formal as well. Okay, so this is a um, just quick overview in natural light. So I don't have any overhead lights on right now. But this is the color so you can see that um, it sort of does look a little bit like chalk paint but it's very shiny because of the top coat that I've put on it's actually not even really wanting to focus on it <laughs> because of how shiny it is but um, it does go really well with our hardwood floors I think and our baseboards are white and the walls in the dining room are gray as well um, this is it up close so you can still see all of the um, details of the chair and I think it does go really well with the design in the fabric. Um, I will probably eventually change the fabric on the chairs but for now I'm just gonna leave them the way they are. Um, and I did also forget to mention that I applied everything with a foam brush so I used one foam brush for the paint and then a different one for the top coat but just those little ones that you can get at Michael's or anywhere like that. Um, but if you have any questions about doing your chairs or if I missed anything in the video, um, my social media links are always listed down below and you can send me an email at coulters.workshop at gmail.com. And thanks so much for watching my video and I hope you had a great day.